So I, female, 27, have been with my boyfriend, male, 25, for three years next month. He is the best boyfriend I've ever had, and this is the best and healthiest relationship I've ever had with anyone. I haven't had many relationships, but this is by far the best one. There are so many things I love about him, and I know that he loves me just as much, if not more. When we first started dating, I told him that I was dating to marry. I know exactly what I want, and I have a timeline for it. I want to be married for a little while before I have kids, and I want to have kids no later than 35 years old. I want this for a multitude of reasons, not the least of which is avoiding a high-risk pregnancy. I have experienced personal loss, my baby sister four months due to genetic complications that were likely associated with my mother's geriatric pregnancy. New pregnancies are considered geriatric and higher risk once the woman is 34 or older. My mom was exactly 34. We've had many talks about this throughout the years as this is something that is important to me and he knows that. All that being said, I am turning 28 this year. He's 26 this month. Time is flying and I feel like I'll be 30 next week. I really don't want to be his or anyone's girlfriend for more than four or five years. And as we approach our third year and move towards our fourth year, I would really like to be engaged pretty soon. He said that he wants to marry me, but it's always someday and not anytime soon. When I ask him what he sees for us in the next year or two, he says that he wants us to be living together which gives me hope because he knows that I have no interest in living with a significant other unless we are at least engaged. But at the same time, he also wants to move out of his parents' house and live on his own for a while before we actually live together. I totally respect the fact that he may not be at a point in his life where he is ready to take the next step of engagement, and I don't want to push him or give him an ultimatum. However, I do want to do what's best for myself at the end of the day no matter how much I love him, and I love our relationship. I love him, and I know that us breaking up would destroy him, but at the same time, I don't want to put my own life on hold and my health at risk in the future solely to spare his feelings. I'm torn on what to do, and a big part of me feels like I would be a gigantic jerk for this. And so, I ask for the Court of Public Reddit opinion. Would I be the jerk for breaking up with him if we're not engaged within the next year? P.S. I would be more than happy to get back with him if we did break up and he decided he wanted to get married. I love him, and I want to be with him, but I also want to do what is in my own best interest for my future. Edit. Okay, I didn't think this would get so much attention, and I haven't even read all the comments post at 3 a.m. and woke up to almost 600 comments, and I just want to clear a few things up. One, I'm not super rigid in this timeline. I know life happens the way it's gonna happen regardless of what we plan. The only thing I'm the least willing to compromise on is when I have kids. Among the health risks, I also just don't wanna be pushing 40 and pushing out a baby for the first time and I want at least two kids. Two, some of you guys are mean and sad jerks, but a lot of you have given great advice and mirrored a lot of thoughts I was already having. I think I'm gonna wait until our anniversary before I have yet another talk with him about not just what I want, but what he wants and when he wants it. He's not irresponsible at all, but he has the freedom and safety net, his parents, to allow him the freedom to try things and mess up, etc. I do not, he's also not on a clock like I am. Three, I'm not pressuring him, I'm not manipulating him. We wouldn't be together if that were the case. He's not stupid, and he's not one to tolerate that shoot from anyone, including me, and I would never. I have too much love and respect, and frankly, I'm just not a piece of shoot. Four, I most certainly have communicated everything in this post to him, clearly and in full. He knows what I want, and I have an idea of what he wants. I've always made sure to make all my intentions clear with him, because I do have a tendency to expect people close to me to just know or pick up on hints and things, and I just really didn't want that frustration and confusion in my relationship. Edit 2. Some of you have asked why I don't want to live together before engagement. The short answer is that I completely reject the premise that people should or need to live together to figure out if they want to get married. 
I've had conversations like this on Reddit before. And basically, if you don't know how this person is with their personal space, how they clean up, their hygiene habits, etc., after years of being together without living together, then marriage isn't something you should even be considering. Like, what have y'all been doing all these years? I feel like any issues that would arise after engagement while living together should be easily fixable if the relationship is solid and both of you love each other and are willing to work past minor disagreements, etc. Also, why would I fuse my life, split finances and share assets, etc. with someone that I don't know I'll be with for life? What happens when you break up? Now you have to uproot your whole life, find a new place, figure out how to split stuff, etc. And there are no legal protections against issues regarding property, etc. Yeah, no thanks. Also, he agrees with this sentiment. Now for a few comments before the update. Comment one, no idiots here, but please talk to an OB. I am a nurse. I am so sorry about your sibling, but 34 years old is not geriatric and shouldn't be seen as a high risk age to have a pregnancy. Please talk to a doctor. This is often called preconception counseling. FDYW, I used to think I would be done having kids by 35. Life and illness happened, and I just had a baby at 36, though not my first. Zero regrets, and my medical team had no concerns about pregnancy risks or safety because of my age. Comment two, a geriatric pregnancy being 34 years old or older is no longer considered high risk like it used to be. In the UK anyway, the NHS now counts a geriatric pregnancy as being aged 40 or over. I know you have a timeline, but I am having a perfectly healthy first pregnancy at 35. Life works out how it does. It's very hard to control. Now for the update. Hey everyone, thanks for all the comments on my last post. I've got a tense update for you all. So our anniversary came and I decided it was time to have the talk with my boyfriend. I was nervous, but I knew it had to be done. We went out for a nice dinner and I could tell he was feeling something was up. After we ate, I brought up our future and that's when things took a turn. He admitted he'd been thinking a lot about us and our timeline. He said he loved me, but he wasn't ready for marriage. He wanted to experience living alone to grow independently. I was heartbroken. I thought we were on the same page, but it turned out we weren't even reading the same book. I reminded him of my timeline, my fears of a high-risk pregnancy, and the loss of my baby sister. It was a moment I'll never forget, the way his face fell. He knew how much this meant to me, but he still couldn't give me the commitment I needed. We decided to take a break, to give each other space to think. Those days apart were some of the hardest I've ever experienced. I missed him terribly, but I also felt a strange sense of relief. It was like I could finally breathe, knowing that I wasn't waiting for something that might never happen. During our time apart, I couldn't help but think about our past, how he was always the one to make me laugh when I was down, how he supported me when I got that promotion at work, and how he was there for me when my grandmother passed away. We had built so many memories together and the thought of losing that was unbearable. But then two days into our break, I saw something that changed everything. I was scrolling through social media when I saw a picture of him out with friends, looking happier than I'd seen him in months. It was like a punch to the gut. Was he really better off without me? I confronted him about it the next day. The conversation was intense. He confessed that he felt trapped by my timeline, that he was scared of making a mistake that would affect both our lives. He said he needed to figure out who he was outside of our relationship. I understood where he was coming from, but it didn't make the pain any less real. I realized that loving someone sometimes means letting them go, even if it breaks your heart. We met up again on the third day and it was clear that things had changed between us. The love was still there, but the future we had imagined together was not. We decided to break up. It was mutual, but that didn't make it any easier. I moved back in with my parents for support. They were surprised, but supportive. They knew how much I had invested in the relationship and how much it hurt to walk away. As for my ex, he moved out of his parents' house and got his own place. I heard through mutual friends that he was doing well, exploring his newfound freedom. It was bittersweet to hear. I was happy for him, but I couldn't shake the feeling of loss. 
it's been a ride of emotions. Some days I feel strong and empowered, ready to take on the world. Other days I'm a mess, missing him and the life we planned. But I'm trying to stay positive. I'm focusing on myself, my career, and my health. I'm not giving up on my dreams of marriage and kids, but I'm also learning to be okay with the uncertainty of the future. As for my ex and me, who knows what the future holds? Maybe one day our paths will cross again and things will be different. But for now, I'm taking it one day at a time, healing and growing from this experience. Husband goes nuclear over my toy, but watches corn nonstop. We're on a break, but his coworker confession might just be the last straw. My husband and I are in our 40s and have been together for 20 years. We have a great intimacy life. On average, I would say every other day, but because of work or stress, there may be a few days we don't do it, and then there are days we do it multiple times a day. But overall, it's pretty often. We have a lot of toys we use together, and intimacy is usually very good. My husband admits he looks at corn constantly. Basically, if I leave the house, then he will be watching corn. He's even admitted to watching it in the home office on the iPad while he's working. We both telework, but he has more in-office days than I do. I don't care about his corn watching as long as it doesn't negatively affect our intimacy life. I frequently initiate intimacy and almost never say no if he wants it. Our intimacy life is very good. The other day he was at work and I got in a mood and used one of the vibrating intimacy toys. I mentioned it to him later that night and he lost it. He compared me using the intimacy toy as if I was cheating. I don't self-intimacy often, and I don't think I've ever used a toy by myself before. I didn't know he felt this way about it. I know he masturbates to corn often, and I don't care. He said, I can take care of myself, just can't use a toy because that's cheating. So I said, fine. If I can't use the toys, you need to stop watching corn without me, because he's obviously fantasizing about other women. I don't actually have a problem with it, but I just have a problem with him placing restrictions on me. Am I the idiot for this being my response? Edit. A lot of people saying he has a corn addiction. Probably. A lot of guys do, and he's gone through times where he has limited it due to him feeling the same. However, I have no issue with him watching, and I actually think it helps his intimacy drive. A lot of the time he says he watches it and then comes find me to complete the act. I'm perfectly fine with that. He doesn't have a problem with me looking at corn. Don't do it often. Our motto has always been, everything is okay if it turns you on, as long as it's just us, everything legal and moral. He's not normally controlling, jealous, or possessive. I think I may have overreacted with my statement and instead should dig a little deeper to find out why this bothers him. I don't like to corn shame. I grew up extremely religious, let's say almost cult-like religious, and I feel shaming anyone for self-intimacy is horrible and causes mental issues, especially for young boys. Definitely still not going to apologize for what I did, but this is out of the norm for him, and I should have realized that first. Thanks for everyone's responses. Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment one, not the idiot. So he can watch corn and watch women naked, but he doesn't want you using a toy? Makes no sense. Using a toy is not cheating. Maybe it's his ego thinking you'll like the toy more than his weenie. Either way, I don't think your response was bad and that he should just get over it. Comment two, not the idiot. It sounds like your husband is heavily addicted to corn and the fact he's using that to get off but won't allow you to use anything to get off is hypocritical. Now for the update. Hey everyone, it's been a week since my last post, and wow, a lot has happened. I never expected things to take the turns they did, but here we are. So after our big argument about the intimacy toy and corn watching, things got really tense at home. My husband and I have always been open about our desires and habits, so this sudden change in his attitude was jarring. I decided to take some advice from the comments and talk to him more deeply about why he felt so strongly against me using a toy by myself. Turns out, my husband had been harboring some insecurities that I never knew about. He confessed that he felt like he couldn't satisfy me anymore and that the toy was a sign that he was being replaced. I was shocked. We've always had a great intimacy life, and I've never given him any reason to think he wasn't enough for me. 
I reassured him that wasn't the case, but the conversation took a turn I didn't expect. He admitted that he had been feeling disconnected from me, not just physically, but emotionally too. He said that watching corn was an escape for him, a way to feel something without having to confront the growing distance between us. I was heartbroken. Here I was, thinking we were as close as ever, and my husband was feeling alone. It made me realize that maybe our intimacy life, as active as it was, had become more about routine than connection. We had been together for 20 years, and I guess we had started to take each other for granted. We decided to take a break from intimacy and corn altogether, to focus on rebuilding our emotional intimacy. It was hard, especially since intimacy had been such a big part of our relationship, but we started doing other things together, like taking long walks and having deep conversations about our hopes and fears. During one of these talks, my husband dropped another bombshell. He confessed that a few months back, during a particularly stressful time at work, he had almost crossed a line with a coworker. Nothing happened, but he had considered it. He was crying when he told me, and I could see the guilt eating him up inside. I didn't know what to say. I felt like my world was crumbling. The trust I had in him was shaken, and I couldn't help but wonder what else I didn't know about the man I had shared my life with. We had a huge fight after that. I couldn't believe he would even think about being with someone else. He begged for my forgiveness, saying it was a moment of weakness that he regretted deeply. The next few days were a blur of tears and silence. I couldn't look at him without feeling a mix of anger and sadness. He tried to be affectionate, to show me he was sorry, but I just couldn't respond. Then two days ago, I found out that the coworker he had mentioned was someone I knew. She had been to our house for company parties, and I had always thought she was nice. The betrayal felt even worse knowing it was her. We had another confrontation, this time with more yelling than talking. I asked him how he could do this to me, to us. He didn't have a good answer. Just more apologies and promises that it would never happen again. I'm still trying to process everything. The man I thought I knew seems like a stranger now. Our relationship feels like it's hanging by a thread, and I'm not sure what the future holds for us. I'm not ready to give up on 20 years together, but I can't just forget what happened either. It's going to take a lot of work to get through this, and I'm not sure if we're both up for the challenge. For now, we're still living in the same house, but it feels like we're miles apart. I miss the way things used to be, but I know we can't go back to that. We have to find a new way forward, and I hope we can do it together. My son's plea for acceptance ignored, I demanded a two-year wait, but his stepmom's affair and our united front against it showed me. Hello everyone, this is my first time using Reddit, so if I'm not doing this correctly, I apologize. I, 41-year-old female, need an outsider perspective on the situation that I'm currently in with my son, 16-year-old male, his father, 43-year-old male, and his stepmother, 43-year-old female. Three weeks ago on Monday night while I was getting ready for bed, my son came into my room and said he needed to tell me something. My son told me through tears that he is transgender. I was in complete shock, to be honest, just because of how much my son has always looked down on things he considered girly. I've seen a lot of things about transgender people in the media and news. They were mainly negative things, such as how being transgender was a mental health disorder and other nonsense. Now, these are not things I believe. However, I have also seen things about former transgender individuals that transitioned young and when they got older, realized they made a mistake. Therefore, I do not believe individuals under the age of 18 should be allowed to transition as they can't make that permanent choice yet. My argument is that if someone under 18 can't get a tattoo because they're too young, then they shouldn't be allowed to transition either which is the current problem I'm dealing with. After my son's confession, I told him to go to bed and that we'd talk about it in the morning. When the morning came, I told my son the truth about how I felt and told him that as long as he was under my care, I wouldn't allow him to transition, but that once he turned 18, he'd have my full support to transition because then he's fully able to make his own choices. 
Me and my son's father got divorced eight years ago, and his father remarried four years ago. We have a custody agreement of three weeks on and three weeks off. Three hours after I dropped my son off at his father's house today, I got a call from his stepmother screaming at me, calling me a bigot, a transphobe, a bad parent, as well as unsupportive and many other names. I ended up hanging up the phone because of how vile her words were. My ex-husband also texted me saying that our son, who he was now referring to as our daughter, no longer wanted to live with me and that my ex and a moving company would come and get our son's things from my house. I can't fight this since where we live, if a child is 16, they can choose with which parent they want to live with. I tried reaching out to my son, but he's ignoring me. So Reddit, am I the idiot? Advice is welcome. Update. Hello, everyone. I've realized with the help of the people in the comments that I am in jerk. The way I handled this situation and rebuffed my own child in her moment of need was absolutely disgusting. This was not a moment for me to smear my own beliefs on my daughter, but a moment to support and love her unconditionally, like I'm supposed to. And I seriously failed to do that. There are many ways a person can transition. It's not just medical. They can transition socially and by changing their name and the way they dress. I feel horrible knowing how unsupported and alone my daughter must have felt the last three weeks because of her own mother. I am going to reach out to her father first and ask him to talk to her for me. I don't want to reach out to her and make her uncomfortable considering the damage I've already done. I really hope my daughter can accept my apology and find it in herself to possibly forgive me. I really can't believe what I have done. Now for a few comments before the update. Comment one. It seems like maybe you're thinking of transitioning only in the sense of gender affirming medical care. And that's just a part of it. If you're worried about the permanent aspects, why can your kid not still transition in the sense of wearing different clothes, going by a different name and pronouns, things like that? Comment two. In case this isn't bait, you can support her by using her pronouns and chosen name if she has one. These are reversible changes. You should also start grappling with the fact that these changes will likely not reverse. Now, for the update. Hey everyone, it's been a hectic couple of weeks since my last post, and I've got a lot to share. After realizing my mistake and how I hurt my daughter, I reached out to her father to help mend things. He was hesitant at first, but he agreed to talk to her on my behalf. The next day, my ex-husband called me back with news that left me reeling. My daughter had agreed to meet me, but she wanted it to be at her therapist's office. I was nervous, but hopeful that this could be the start of repairing our relationship. The meeting was intense. My daughter, with the support of her therapist, expressed her pain and disappointment in me. She told me about the nights she cried herself to sleep and the days she felt like she was suffocating, hiding who she truly was. I listened, tears streaming down my face as I realized the depth of her struggle. I apologized from the bottom of my heart and promised to support her in every way I could. She was cautious but accepted my apology. We agreed to start attending family therapy sessions together. Things seemed to be looking up but then came the twist that I never saw coming. My ex-husband and his wife had been having issues for months, something I was completely unaware of. Their marriage was on the rocks, and it all came to a head one evening when my daughter overheard a heated argument between them. It turned out that her stepmother, who had been so vocal in her support, was actually having an affair. My daughter was devastated. The person she had turned to for support during her most vulnerable time had betrayed her trust. She felt lost and didn't know who to turn to. In a surprising turn of events, she started to lean on me more, seeking the comfort of her biological parent. As we continued therapy, our bond slowly began to strengthen. We had our ups and downs, but we were making progress. Then just last week, my daughter dropped another bombshell. She confessed that she had been seeing someone romantically, a boy from her support group. She was happy, and as her mother, that's all I could have asked for. But happiness is often fleeting. Her boyfriend's parents were not supportive of their relationship, and they forbade him from seeing her. My daughter was heartbroken once again, and I felt her pain as if it were my own. 
Through all of this, my ex-husband's marriage officially ended. He was now a single parent, just like me. We found ourselves in an odd sort of alliance, co-parenting our daughter through her toughest times. As for my daughter, she's been showing incredible resilience. She's focusing on her studies and her art, channeling her emotions into beautiful paintings that take my breath away. She's becoming more confident in her identity every day, and I'm so proud of her. But it's not all sunshine and rainbows. The situation with her boyfriend is unresolved, and it weighs heavily on her. She misses him terribly, and there's a sadness in her eyes that I wish I could erase. As for me, I'm learning to be the mother she needs. I'm educating myself, attending PFLAG meetings, and doing everything I can to show her that I'm here for her, no matter what. If you like this video, you'll probably like these too. Also, while you're here, please consider subscribing. It's your support that keeps this channel alive and allows me to make better and longer videos. Have a great day.